once again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Rock on, baby! Don't you forget that pound rock on, pound dark side, because I guess we're the dark side of the freaking biker scene, man. Anyway, we're going to be continuing our overview of that commission report on the pagans, and then we're going across the pond over to Australia. Yes, some people bitching a little bit that I don't do enough news on Australia. So, I said, okay. Well, there's some more, man. As long as I don't have to speak French like up in Canada. No, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will be reading some. Uh, you know, I can't tell you the source. Always keep my sources under wrap. But I will give you a gist of what they thought of what we covered yesterday. And it is from somebody inside. But again, I'm not going to tell you who it is. Can't do that. Can't do that. Hey, what do you guys think, man? It came out that Trump has the votes to confirm his justice. And boy, are the lefties all mad, man. You thought them snowflakes were crying before. Now it's going to get worse. I don't even think they, they're going to have a hearing on it, man. I think they're just going to have a vote because look what they did with Kavanaugh. They, they wrecked that guy, man. But one thing I'm excited about, we will now have a majority, because I don't consider Roberts a conservative, but we will have a 5-4 because that idiot goes back and forth. But I cannot wait till they bring some gun control cases over. We'll finally be able to get our Second Amendment cemented. I don't know what they're crying about, man. That's all they do is go to courts to try to legislate because they can't get anything else done. Personally, I think we're going to take back the House and uh, probably the Senate. And uh, old Trump boy is going to be reelected. We get some stuff done. But anyway, I want to read this really quick before we go into, you know, Looking at that report. It starts out by saying, hi bud, rock and roll man, rock and roll. They forbid that kind of shit. A couple things just so you know. A prospect is charged $600 when he steps up. It used to be $250 a long time ago. Then $300, $500, now it's $600. This right here is the big reason a lot of people need to understand what they're getting involved with. It is expensive to be a part of a lot of these clubs. Very expensive. You know, it's like that old shit moment when people finally realize, oh man, I gotta pay this, gotta pay that. And that's why I always say when these cops claim that everybody's a criminal, well, if this is the case, why can't they pay their dues? You see what I'm saying? Anyway, the fee is for his plain denim. The $600 includes his eventual colors, all his food and drink while he's prospecting. See, they pay everything for the prospects. That right there is unusual, and it's pretty cool. Uh, the 600 does not buy a patch. He still must prospect. You see how that commission report didn't put that in there? It is uh, non-refundable as expected. They like to prospect six months minimum, which is, you know, the basics. Exceptions are often made given the individual on how he handles himself. Well, yeah. Uh, but they work prospect at least one mandatory, and that's a national. Now, as far as this white supremacist crap that that report was pushing... And this is coming from a very reliable source. We have blacks in the club now. That should answer that question. It did piss some other guys off, but they were given the chance to walk away. 
the quote black is supposed to have some kind of Latin origin in him, but a few are straight A black. Good guys. So I think that kind of kills the narrative that this report's pushing that the pagans are white supremacists. We are extremely closely allied with uh, TGMC, Thunder Guard Motorcycle Club. Have been for many years. Everybody knows that. We have many other black MCs attend our open events. Some of those guys have more swastikas and, and shit than the pagans. Very true. Because again... The swastika was to scare away civilians away from people back in the 70s, and everybody wears them. Uh, I was uh, around for a lot of shit. At one time, things were so effed up. Upper uh, effers stealing and running the club into the ground. I had a lot of good brothers walk away then. I just laid low and maintained. We are so glad that Conan came back. He is just a effing great guy. It sounds like it. Sounds like it. Open, approachable, and natural-born leader with skills and common sense. He is working on growing the club. He preaches a theory to expect cops in the club. Smart guy. Smart guy. That is why he came out with a drug and law policy. Now, I love this. I love this. You act stupid. You are on your own. You know what? If I had a clapper on my thing right now, I'd, I'd hit it, man. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's what people need to hear. It kills the narrative of what the cops are trying to press on people. Right here, you got it. Let's see here. Uh, I think I proved my fidelity. Yeah, he did. He did. So... Okay, cool. But that was actually a statement on some of the stuff that I read yesterday. I'm so happy, so happy that somebody with knowledge of this came out, you know, besides my thoughts, can dispute this. I knew it, and I said it yesterday in my show. I cannot believe the pagans would do that. Not them. No way. They've been around since 1959. Are you kidding me? You really think they're going to drop the prospect period for money? No. No. And now you got it on record with somebody from close to the club that Conan and the rest of the people instituted a deal where if you screwing around, you're on your own. The club ain't going to back you, which they should not. They're not going to get a lawyer. And a lot of clubs I've been hearing have been doing that. Because I think, personally, the cops are trying to set them up with a RICO. But here it comes out, hey, you know, not only didn't, during the hearing that the National VP came out and said, hey, this club don't approve of that type of stuff. They do it, they do it on their own, not at the behest of the club. But now we have a statement saying, hey, wait a second, the club don't do that. Uh-uh. We don't feel like freaking paying for you when you're out doing something stupid. I told you that clubs don't like that stuff, and it's only individuals that are usually doing it. And those individuals are the ones that bring the heat onto the club. So a lot of clubs don't deal with that anymore. This is, and I'm reminded of it, this is not the 70s, 80s, or 90s. This is 2020. It's a whole different world now. Too much technology. You know, you can do something that a freaking video camera from freaking two miles away can see you. So why would a club want to risk all the noise? Especially when the government has a heart on for this RICO crap all the time. That is not logical. We're going to go over the report a couple more pages. Like I said, it's going to have to be done over a couple segments. But I really am glad that uh, somebody from the inside, you know, 
most of the time they're not allowed to that's why i'm not mentioning names areas any of that stuff uh but i'm really glad to uh, hear some of that stuff and i bet a lot of other people are too people need to know that clubs don't support this kind of stuff why because then it brings people behind them it makes the leo argument invalid because god forbid the clubs never are able to get their side of the story out because damn man it's like the media is all over their peckers all the time the leo i'm talking about so that was pretty freaking cool but let's go to this report i'm talking about and uh let's get into this and think about that response that was given while we're going over this get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at harleyliberty.com founded in 2012 insane throttle biker news has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene go over now and bookmark harleyliberty.com right on Okay, here we go. That's the that Crime Commission's report. We read uh, pages 7 through 9 yesterday, and we'll go through 10 through maybe 12 on this one today. This is what they claim are illicit activities that is being done by the pagans. And remember, again, there was a statement that, and not actually a statement, but somebody said, hey, if you do stupid stuff, you're on your own. Despite club bylaws that prohibit members from engaging in or profiting from drug sales, narcotic sales have long been a central component of the uh, pagans' criminal activities. One thing that these people don't understand is club members take bylaws very serious. Why do you think that these older clubs have been around for like ever. They always stuck to the bylaws. Why do you think new clubs usually fail? Because they don't stick to the bylaws. See, uh, bylaws, they govern everything going on within the club. It keeps presidents from being dictators. And we often see that all the time in these pop-up clubs. Hey. This guy's acting like a dictator. Well, why are you letting him? You got bylaws, don't you? Why isn't the sergeant at arms enforcing them bylaws? So for them, the put and they're acknowledging it right here in this report that the club does have bylaws prohibiting this. So at that point, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, the club has the bylaws. This guy's going out to do this kind of stuff. Hey. It's on him. It's not on the club. That ain't organized. In New Jersey, the pagans sell cocaine, marijuana, but methamphetamine remains the primary narcotic sold by members. Now, again, is it organized? Is it a club thing? What is it? You don't say nothing here, but it's the pagans. So, basically, when I do the wall of shame... And uh, we've done many stories where cops were involved in the drug deals. Does that mean all cops do it? You sure the hell don't name a whole police department now, do you? But here, you're naming the pagans as a whole. Although the pagans previously manufactured a drug themselves in makeshift labs... The commission found the bikers largely abandoned that practice and now obtain it from the elements of the Mexican drug cartel. So now you're trying to link them internationally. Is that how the feds are doing it? And how did the commission find out? Again, who are your experts on this? Who is speaking on this? Are you speaking to people that turned over and ratted? To save their asses? Is that how you're getting this information? And if so, how reliable is that information you're getting from them? Oh wait, that don't fit your agenda though to tell people that in this report. Law enforcement and confidential sources told the commission that cartel operatives, I guess I answered my own question here. 
Confidential sources. Really? Working out of Philadelphia and Atlanta now provide direct conduit for the narcotic. The commissions found the gang's more recent drug distribution activities in New Jersey tend to be a small-scale, independent operations that only involve a few individuals. Whoa! Whoa! That's what I've been saying, no? Oh my god, they put it in black and white right here! Rather than the entire membership of the chapter. So for all you haters, here's one gleaming thing that came out of this report. They are acknowledging it's only a few individuals. Not the entire chapter, not the entire club. That must have been a kick in the balls to haters, man, that always say, hey, clubs are criminal organizations. Well, this uh, supposed commission just found that it's only a few. And I've been preaching that. They go on to say, under this uh, cell-like structure, a limited number of pagans participate in the day-to-day -day narcotics transactions and distribution while other chapter members hold only basic knowledge of it. Or, here we go, and are unaware of the source of the narcotics or where the proceeds go. So only a few have knowledge. They're the ones out there doing it, not at the behest of the club. The other club members don't know nothing that's going on. That must have sucked for you had to say that. And they call it a strategy. Strategy helps to protect the larger group from prosecution because only a limited number of people know the details. Now, uh-uh. Uh-uh. If it was a club thing, everybody would know because they have a vote at the table. But you're not telling people that. The commission identified nearly a dozen of these types of independent narcotics operations. In South Jersey, based out of uh, chapters in Atlantic, Burlington, Camden, Cape May, uh, Cumberland, Gloucester, and Salem, these cells operated as standalone businesses, functioned independently. You're not making your case here. So, yeah, you know, say we got 300 members, 400 members, spread out in chapters, a couple guys are doing their thing. Yeah, it's independent. It's not like it's organized. But that's what you've been pushing the whole time. And just some of the stuff we went over in this report. It isn't the pagans national or at the chapter level. They just said it was independent. <laughs> Now, let's see here. In, let's see, you know what? Let's see if they're going to contradict themselves. In some incidences, chapter leaders orchestrated the drug operations and utilized lower ranking members or associates to distribute drugs to customers. There is no low ranking members when you get in a club. Yeah, you got officers, your president, sec treasurer, all that stuff. But when they're at the table, they're all equal in a meeting. Everybody gets one vote. So I doubt if somebody don't want to be involved in something like that, they're going to raise their hand and say, hey, man, it's not for me. I ain't in. The inquiry uh, revealed that the demand for uh, narcotics in the region was so great that one prominent supplier to several of these South Jersey pagan operations have been receiving more than 50 pounds of crystal meth every five or six weeks from a cartel-based source. These enterprises undoubtedly resulted in sizable profits for the proprietors. Okay, so why are they, if they're so successful, why are they having a hard time paying dues? And where's these drug busts you keep on saying? 
Right now, a former member of your club is going through the appeals process. He got busted with what? A gram or something like that? It wasn't that much. But here, you're claiming 50 pounds. And he was a high-level officer. That does not make any sense to me. Now, according to law enforcement and sources... Okay, again, who's your sources? You just can't keep on saying law enforcement. One pound of the narcotic can yield thousands of doses that can net up to $50,000 on the street from drug sales. Okay. Where's the profits? Where's the busts? Where are your examples? Violence. Increased violence has been a hallmark of the pagan resurgence. Gang members have been increasingly combative with not only rivals, but against anyone the gang believes is a threat or has shown disrespect. This newfound level of aggression has led to drive-by shootings, savage beatdowns of adversaries. Yeah, we've seen that kind of stuff. Unprovoked physical assaults on members of the public. We've seen a couple of those incidents, but it was never proven. Now, as far as this newfound level of aggression, well, what do you think happens when somebody goes into another 1% territory? And there's one club in particular that always does that. That's why there's all kinds of hell all the time. That's why I don't understand why they couldn't agree with the 69 boundary lines and just leave it as that. No, more people have to get into it. Now, the drive-by shootings, well, that's the first that I heard at a motorcycle club not taking care of their business uh, face-to-face. Many of the clashes with rival bikers came as the pagans made a concerted effort to expand in New Jersey into territories traditionally dominated by the Hells Angels. Wait a second here, and here's where my argument's going to be going. They're a West Coast club. The Pagans are an East Coast club. Last time I checked, my geography teacher told me, hey, wait a second here. New Jersey's on the East Coast. See where I'm getting at, guys? Renewed bloodshed between the two gangs can be traced back to the 2017 uh, when a provocation instigated by the Pagans resulted in the Hells Angels shooting two of the bikers in Elizabeth. The Pagans had just completed a power ride past the uh, Rivals Clubhouse in Newark, a biker practice done to uh, stake claim to an adversary's territory. Okay, <laughs> really? <laughs> Police suspect uh, suspect the Pagans were also behind drive-by shootings that sprayed gunfire at the Hells Angel Clubhouse on two consecutive days in February 2019. Okay, where's your proof to that? If somebody has an article on this, let me know. In South Jersey, much of the uh, Pagan's rancor in recent years has been directed at the Warlocks, its chief adversary in the region. To exhibit its dominance, the Pagan's launched various takeovers of area bars and restaurants including one occasion in 2017 when more than 100 members and associates packed into a small pub as one of the bikers rode his motorcycle inside and did burnouts on the floor. That's good old biker fun, if you ask me. They were probably on a poker run. A day before, a group of pagans conducted a power ride past the Gloucester County home of the former national president of the Warlocks. While these represented document accounts, okay, I'd like to, if you guys can give me some documentation, what they're talking about, let me know. Send it to me. Info at insanethroutlebikernews.com. Of in, uh, intimidation and gun violence involving pagans, law enforcement authorities told the commission that actual number of incidents were likely higher. Where's your proof again? Because most incidents that ensue between rival clubs are undocumented unless the incident takes place in a public venue. Read one more page here and go over it. 
A disturbing trend that has emerged as part of the escalation of violence by the pagans is that gang members are no longer simply attacking rivals, but are now also directing hostilities at random people in bars, probably the ones that just mouth off and, you know, don't shut up, drivers on the road, and other non-gang-affiliated citizens. Some of the incidents identified by the commission appear intended merely to intimidate a victim, such as an episode where a female motor, motorist vehicle was uh, briefly surrounded by a group of pagan bikers on the Cumberland County Roadway after one of the riders perceived the driver had cut them off. Sometimes pagans act as de facto traffic cops and block off sections of roads so the riding packs can pass through the intersection. Your Leo clubs do the same damn thing! That's a practice because you got people that are on their phone that don't know how to put it down and next thing you know a couple bikers are hit. Other times the bikers bully customers into vacating public places like bars so gang members can have a place to themselves. You know what? That's bullshit. However, on other occasions pagan aggression resulted in physical assaults that brought serious bodily harm to the victims often the targets of the tax have limited or, in some cases, no connection at all to the bikers. And there are discur- <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, transgressions was some sort of perceived act. During the commission's public hearing, New Jersey State Police Lieutenant Michael Peterson, unit head of the Real-Time Crime Center South, testified that these types of attacks have become increasingly common in South Jersey. Recent assaults in which a member of the public was the intended target included a pagan beating of a landlord in Wildwood who attempted to evict a tenant. How do you know it wasn't the landlord screwing around with the woman and she didn't like it? Just because she's uh, connected to him, hey, they're going to go and say, hey, this guy's uh, up on me. What, do you think they're just going to stand back? They claim after she failed to pay the rent and uh, the stabbing of an individual who was apparently unwelcome at a private pagan party. Huh. Anyway, tomorrow we'll continue on this uh, trail as usual. We're going to be on page 12. We'll keep on going until we get to 22. Now, some good news out of the registeredherald.com. Poker Run will raise money for Toys for Tots. Oh yeah, you see, you know, the good that clubs do, you only mentioned a couple things in it. The Patriots Motorcycle Club is sponsoring a Poker Run to raise funds for the Toys for Tots program in Greenbrier County. West Virginia, baby. Slated for Saturday, the event is open to everyone who wants to enter. Participants may ra ride a motorcycle or drive an automobile or truck. Registration will be from 9 to 11 at the Sitco Gas Station restaurant off of Interstate 64. Alta exit, the runs route will be given upon registration. Cost is $25 per driver, includes a t-shirt and a hand, with a $10 charge for an extra hand and $15 for an extra t-shirt. There you go. If you, have, uh, you want information on it, call Bob Johnson, 304-667-7023. Now I'm going overseas, where the kangaroos roam. Common Chero trial, huge explosion of cash deposits in defendant's accounts. Now, you want to talk gangster, man. There's a lot of gangsters over in Oz, man. A financial analyst has uh, described a huge explosion of cash deposits going to some of the defendant's bank accounts. Maybe they run the lottery or something. They're getting some money from their families overseas. I don't know. Who are standing trial connected to the common charos. The money laundering and drug trial against Comanchero President Pasikla Nafua. I can't even pronounce it. Sorry, buddy. No way I'm going to be able to get that one. And it talks about some of the others. Uh, a media personality who has name suppression and a woman who also with name suppression. See, in the United States, they have to give that up to the defendants. 
you have a right to a fair trial and to know your accusers. The five were arrested following a series of raids across Auckland in April, which saw more than $3.7 million in assets seized along with luxury cars, motorbikes, luxury luggage, and jewelry. On Tuesday, Nicola Endian, a forensic accountant for the police, uh, continued to give evidence. The forensic accountant analyzed the finances of all the defendants and associates to determine what assets were purchased or acquired with alleged criminal proceeds. She also analyzed how much legitimate income individuals or companies had earned by obtaining bank data and coding into the categories. So this is a continual trial. This has been in the news almost every day, this trial, man. It's like uh, the O.J. Simpson thing. <laughs> anyway, MirageNews.com. Fourth man charged over shooting murder of banditos. OMCG senior member. Homicide uh, squad detectives have charged a fourth man as investigations continue into the shooting murder of a senior member of an outlaw motorcycle gang in the state's central west earlier this year. About ten, And this has been covered. Uh, about 10.50 a.m. on Tuesday, uh, the 14th of January, police and emergency services responded to reports a man had been shot at a property on uh, Cannibal Road uh, about 50 kilometers south of Wellington. Officers attached to the Oran Midwestern Police D D District attended and located the body of a 60-year-old man inside the home. He had suffered a gunshot wound to the head. The man has been formally identified as Bandito's OMCG Central West Chapter President Shane DeBritt. So it looks like they got another one uh, arrested. <laughs> the Strike Force Detective, Strike Force Raptor. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, a police are charging a doctor with trafficking offenses for allegedly selling prescription drugs to bikies by Emma Pollard. Uh, police have charged a Brisbane doctor with allegedly trafficking steroids, Valium, and other prescription drugs to outlaw motorcycle gangs. It comes after detectives from the organized crime gangs group executed search warrants across Brisbane including at two medical practices in Chermside and Fortitude Valley. The search warrants resulted in large amounts of prescription drugs and large sums of cash being seized. Detective Inspector Larissa Miller said a 52-year-old man was charged with three counts of trafficking dangerous drugs and 155 counts of supply and dangerous drugs. Quote, during the search, police identified and seized items including steroids, prescription drugs, and more than $300,000 in cash. Uh, the rest of the story, uh, the breach of trust with the doctor, but they do not name any clubs in this one, just outlaw motorcycle clubs. Now, this one's going to piss you off. Uh, Corey Grash, Wall of Shame. Orders from the Chinese government allegedly reporting on activities of Tibetans here in New York. Used of offering information on the NYPD held without bail. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, a cop arrested for, uh, you know, being a spy for Chinese out of New York. Now let's go to my neck of the woods, Rockford. There we go. A weekend arrest sees Rockford police put one of their own in handcuffs. Joshua Sims was booked Saturday. The 29-year-old faces domestic battery and several other charges. Sims is accused of grabbing a woman by the neck and pushing her to the ground in his home. He's being held on a $150,000 bond. Sims is the fourth Rockford police officer to be arrested in the last year. Former Rock House officer Eric Thurmond and officer Daniel Basil both face separate sexual assault charges. No. Frank Fabiani was charged with misdemeanor battery after he arrested a protest. No, that's Rockford for you, baby. <laughs> Strangulation, unlawful restraint. Now, if this happened with a pagan, does that mean all the pagans are in trouble for this? You know, because I asked that question, you know, I do do the wall of shame and all the cops doing all the bad things. So does that make all the cops like that? I'm just asking. 
But we got a spy for China, and then we got, uh, you know, the guy who's beating up on women again. So that is the wall of shame. Don't forget to uh, visit Corey Graff's podcast out there. If you're in the chat room, Corey, put it in or in the comment section. So let's go to my final thoughts. Okay, don't forget to uh, visit China Doll and Hollywood Show over on the YouTube channel. Also on every major podcast platform. I do want to tell you guys, YouTube has came out with a whole different terms of service. If they feel like your video is adult only, they're going to make you sign in to watch it. Yes, a lot of creators are really mad about this one. Uh, It's very important for you to hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when our premieres happen with our videos here on Insane as well as Hollywood and China Dow's show. They're just getting, uh, yeah, clamping down, man. That's why a lot of creators are going to different platforms and stuff. So keep that in mind when you see it. Make sure you're signed in and make sure you hit that uh, notification bell. That way you can see our content. Anyway, my final thoughts. Well, you guys, you know, going through that commission report, I think I'm covering it right down the freaking middle. it, It feels like I'm tearing it apart. And the reason why I'm tearing it apart is because their sources ain't any good. They're not. They're not even mentioning their sources. They're getting it from confidential informants. The one thing I did like about today was they even put it in black and white that the club does not permit that kind of activity, and it's only individuals and not an entire club. So if that's the case. If it's not organized, orders ain't coming from the top, how can you blame it on the Pagans Motorcycle Club? Where is your reasoning for this? If the club's bylaws, and obviously you got a hold of some, say you're on your own if you do this and that, the club ain't going to back you, that should be evidence enough that the club does not condone that kind of behavior. I know at that hearing, uh, you know what, they actually did the right thing claiming uh, the fifth, but even said the club don't support that kind of stuff. The narrative that's put out, though, is there's some kind of freaking gangsters. And that isn't right to destroy somebody's reputation when it's in front of you. They don't want this happening. And you even admit it to be true. So that was my thoughts on part two of our reading of this commission report. We actually got out of it what I've been saying all along, that it's only a few people doing it. You can't blame the entire club. That's how I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how the hell they were able to recall the whole Mongols club. Because a lot of them guys... They don't have any charges. They go to work every day. So, hopefully, this is an issue that makes it up the chain and the the court system and get a ruling on this, get some precedent for it, because this just ain't right to target Americans like that. You have a right to assemble with whomever you want in this country. You're not supposed to have your reputation destroyed over a few freaking idiots. That makes everything that they do, bikers do, they put it in a bad light and they do it on purpose to fill their freaking coffers. I truly believe that. Why don't you guys go after real freaking gangs if that's the problem, man? Go all, go after MS-13. Go after the ones here in Chicago on the south and west side shooting up kids. Don't bother with clubs. You know what's even funnier? During all this strife, 
during all these riots. It was clubs that actually came out and made sure to support everything that's going on with you guys. They foreign minds for you. You know that one story where the Vagos came in the town. They started labeling uh, them BLMers. But anyway, you had a, a cop say, well, we don't need their help. <laughs> Obviously you do, man, because you guys were getting the asses handed to you. And it was bikers that came out to help. But see, you have uh, you, unless it's one of your LEMC clubs or somebody that just sucks up to you, you don't care. Which, hey, it's America. Do what you want. But just, just stop being schlucks. As far as, uh, and we're going to be continuing that conversation uh, on tomorrow's segment. And another thing I've been getting, it's none of your business if the pagans were flipping uh, the kinfolk. Well, see, they're just handing patches. Well, you might not know your damn history then, should you? In Canada, Hells Angels are the largest club there is. They patch for patch flipped. I don't know how many clubs up there to become the dominant in Canada. So don't even go out on that route. There's been one major 1% of clubs flipping smaller clubs since the beginning of this whole thing started. That ain't a pop-up club. That's a patch over. Most of the time they hang out and, uh, you know, ride together, party together. And then they say, well, shit, we just might as well should be brothers. But that, you know, I don't even know if that's, you know, the, a lot of people been submitting facts and stuff, but I really don't care. And you shouldn't either because we don't wear their patch. Australia, man, a lot in the news, man. They got another guy in that Banditos uh, hit. Uh, Banditos and Common Charles going all the way back to the early 80s, man. They go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, that one trial I covered about, you know, the big money coming into their account and stuff, that is like an O.J. Simpson trial here in the States, man. They just love that stuff in all Australia. Then, of course, you have the Wall of Shame, Rockford, you're a bunch of freaking morons. You always have been. You're freaking schlucks out here. And then you have a cop for the NYPD freaking giving secrets to the Chinese government. What the hell is going on around here? Who knows? Uh, but anyway, don't forget to uh, subscribe uh, to all our platforms, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff. HarleyLiberty.com for your daily biker news. Don't forget to register to vote and vote in person. This is the most consequential freaking election in American history. Get involved. Get out there and vote. Because if you don't vote, you don't have any damn reason to bitch. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!